businesses send and receive data a couple different ways. Um, the majority of the ways that businesses send information is still like legacy phone calls, fax, email. I think it represents like 80% of business interchanges that exist. Um, so that's one way. The other way is APIs, right? The way that uh, we sent carrier information at Shippo. Um, the way Orderful sends EDI information via our API, that's that's a more a favorable way that businesses communicate. Um, and then you have this this other way, this legacy way, like you said, which is EDI. Um, I think it was actually developed by the U.S. military in the 60s. Um, it's just another way for businesses to, to send and receive data. Um, the value of it for very large enterprise companies is that it's incredibly secure uh, and their entire back end, right? Their ERP, uh, their core infrastructure is built around being able to receive EDI data from their trading partners. And so that's why that's why it exists today still. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I, I hadn't uh, heard that EDI was, is it more secure than API or it's just it's more secure than a phone call or an email? It's it you know I think I'm not um, I'm not an EDI uh, like evangelist on itself right as a form of communication but I think the main value it has is it it is more secure um, and because of the testing process that trading partners go through during the EDI lifecycle um, both parties know that the data they're sending and receiving in theory right should conform to to their back ends and be able to be accepted by both parties. Great. Um, can you talk about how it works? Yeah, um, great question. Um, uh, high level, right? So you have uh, the concept of a leader, right? And it could be a supply chain leader. So think Koch Brothers Logistics and all of their carrier followers. It could also be a retail leader like Walmart or Amazon. And what they do is they publish their own guidelines. And these are unique uh, EDI requirements, essentially. Now, the weird thing about EDI is that Target's guideline is different than Walmart's, which is different than uh, you know Home Depot's, which is different than Lowe's. No two EDI guidelines are the exact same, which is also, as you know, Aaron, one of the problems. Like, if you're a developer who's used to working in X12, um, there's nothing repeatable about it to make you better the next time you onboard a new trading partner. So we have the guideline concept, and then you have the follower concept. And these are manufacturers, uh, wholesale trading partners, drop shippers, 3PL, who need to receive orders, right? Or order information from those leaders, uh, potentially fulfill or ship if you're a carrier on the KBX model, ship if you're like a 3PL, drop shipping for a brand for Nordstrom, for example. And this information gets sent and received via a communication channel. Uh, so Walmart drops their order in a van and then via EDI, uh, either a provider, self-service, or through a company like Orderful, you pick or push that order up from the communication channel, uh, and it gets added to your back-end ERP, OMS, IMS, whatever you're using. Um, and in and of itself, like it sounds complex, and it is, but the real difficult part of EDI is before anyone can begin trading with those leaders, you have to take that guideline, you have to integrate it to your back end and you have to go through the testing process with the trading partner. And Aaron, you know this, it's, it's asynchronous. It's payload screenshots that are sent and received or you're waiting for human beings on the other side to respond. And um, yeah, th that's the main problem with EDI, right? Is you're looking at anywhere from four to heck 20, 24 weeks to go live with legacy providers. Yeah. Did there used to be a single standard at some point or is it always that, uh, you know, Walmart thinks are better than Target and Target thinks are better than pick a, pick a retailer. Well, there, there's a bunch of, so X12 is what, for the most part, North America uses on EDI. In Europe, it's Edifact. And in the UK, it's Tradecoms. Now, through the years, uh, there's like hundreds of versions of X12 <laughs> that have come out. I don't think it's as much that uh, Walmart thinks they're better than, than Amazon. Walmart built their business on their own EDI standards, right? So think of their trillion dollar supply chain that they've built over a, a 50, 60, 70, 100 year period. And all of that's built on EDI information flowing between warehouses, between accounting systems, um, routing decisions, right? So their guideline works because their business is built on 
the information coming in the way they need it to run their business. And the same way, same thing is true of Amazon, same thing is true of Target and, and down the line. Got it. So, it, you know, an oversimplification for EDI, at least how I think about it, is you've got the retailer that, you know, the leader that basically makes a template and says, here's the template, here's how I want you to work with me. It's your opportunity, to, it's your responsibility to manage that, manage to that template, to integrate and to make sure it works. Is that a fair assessment? I think it's a fair assessment, right? I don't think there's a lot of empathy uh, from a leader on their on their trading partners. It's it's kind yeah. of like they they control the relationship, right? So um, it's inventory if it's the big retailers, it's demand if it's a supply chain company. Um, you're absolutely right. It's kind of like, hey, here's our guidelines. Email us when you're when you're ready to test.